So uh, welcome everybody. Thanks for joining us for the uh, AgCom webinar, the monthly AgCom webinar. I get to do November here. And we're going to talk about uh, Blackboard Collaborate Ultra. And for those of you that are familiar with um, Collaborate, we've had uh, Collaborate as a web conferencing system, as our, you know, our software for a number of years. Before that, it was Wimba. And Wimba was purchased by um, Blackboard and combined with another um, web conferencing software called Illuminate. And they created uh, Collaborate. And now this is the new version of Collaborate called Collaborate Ultra. So it's not uh, like a new version, not like a, you know, Collaborate uh, 2.0. This is a completely new new version of it. Um, the old one now they're kind of calling Classic. Um, so if you've used the old version, um, you can use a lot of the same, you know, your, the logins and all that stuff is the same, but this is a whole new um, kind of system and, and it's very easy to use. Um, it's similar to Skype, uh, similar to um, some other ones you've probably been a part of. It's going to look weird because we're going to be using Skype to <laughs> show Ultra and the, some of the buttons are in the side of the same spot. So it's going to be weird when I get into it to, to, to demo it. But the reason, you know, we always use Skype here for our AdCom webinars and it's more of a, you know, Skype is good for uh, internal stuff uh, amongst, um, you know, the university system. Uh, but with Collaborate, it's very easy. It's web-based. So you can collaborate then with, Anybody off campus, anybody in the world, basically. Like I said, it's, it's web-based. Um, very easy to log into. For those of you who use the old Collaborate um, version, it was somewhat difficult at times with certain downloads in Java and whatnot. Um, this one is very easy. Just one, one link, one click of a link to get in for participants. Uh, presenters, after you've done it uh, the first time, too, you can get a link that would go directly to your room so you wouldn't have to log in as well. Um, you have to log in, obviously, if you want to find your recordings and manage those and stuff. But very, very easy to use. And for, for those that uh, have been involved with Master Gardener or Spring Fever Garden Forum, uh, Master Gardener last year still used the classic version. Um, but, you know, if you're familiar with Collaborate Alter, then you know how, how well it can work. And then for Spring Fever Garden Forum this last spring, they did use um, Collaborate Ultra here. And I, I heard many good things about it from those that, um, that use that. So... Uh, first off, before I show you the kind of the quick login page, if you don't have a Collaborate account, and this is something you're going to want to do, uh, want to use, is do some webinars like this on your own, uh, I can create one for you. You just have to shoot me an email, say, hey, I'd like a Collaborate Ultra account, um, or Collaborate account, and we create some Ultra sessions. Um, and I can create that super easy. And then I send you all the information, so it's really easy for me to do it then, because then I can send you the link to log in to your main page, um, even maybe help create your first session, which then gets you your, your link to, um, to kind of have your first session if you're going to have your first meeting or webinar. And also that gives a link to you for your participants to use too. So really easy um, for me to get that set up. And I kind of then I keep a, um, I have a spreadsheet of all the people I've created ones for. So in case you lose it or forget, I can go back and remember your username and password. So another thing too that I was telling people at Fall Conference is I can create generic accounts for a department. Um, so if you have... Uh, you know, maybe a monthly meeting, and that's the only time maybe a certain department or group of you are going to use it. Um, instead of creating an account, you know, a username and password um, for eight different people, I could just create one uh, generic account, and then one person logs into that, and the other people all just log in with the guest link, and you can elevate and um, move people up to moderators really easily within the session. So it's a lot easier than having everybody have to log in with the username or password, or me to create that for everybody. Uh, it's just one, you know, like I said, create one generic account. So, so let's get in there, and uh, I'll show you a little bit uh, what it looks like here. I'm gonna share my screen quick. Uh, one thing I, uh, you'll notice, I'm using Chrome um, for presenting. Firefox and Chrome is what they suggest. I have presented with Safari, which would make me believe that. Um, which is good for Mac, but I would make me believe Internet Explorer works just fine. But they suggest just um, from different testing they've done, Chrome and um, Firefox work best when you're a presenter. For participants, it, pretty much it's fine to use any browser. But just to keep that in mind, Firefox and Chrome work best. So say I'd uh, get you set up with a you know, username and password. This would be the login page that I send you. Uh, this would be your first time place to go to log in. And like I said, once you kind of get that session created, you might not even have to go back to this page unless you're going to get uh, find your recordings, maybe to you know download a recording or get the link to a recording to send out uh, to people that might want to that might miss the meeting. So 
Uh, hey, Scott, this is Sonia. Yeah, yeah, Sonia, go ahead. Hi, Myrna was asking, she, um, she said, I have a Blackboard account. Is it the same thing as this Blackboard, oh. um, as this is what you're presenting okay, here? Okay, yeah, I missed the chat here area. Yeah, please, Sonia, if you want, just go ahead and jump in if you see somebody chat, because now I'm sharing my screen here. So thank you for doing that, Sonia. Um, no, because Blackboard, even though it is Blackboard Collaborate, this is completely separate. It's web conferencing, the web conferencing side of Blackboard. So a Blackboard account, um, I will not work, I, I believe, for for this part. Um, I've never came across it where it where it did. Um, so, but like I said, pretty easy for me to set one up for you. So I'll just log in here quick with our account, our AgCom account. And then this is what we call the dashboard. So if you see all the lists, all the uh, names here, these are sessions that I've created. A lot of them are just test ones because I <laughs> did a bunch of test ones at fall conference when I was hosting some sessions. Um, if you log in for the first time, of course, this would be blank because there's no sessions created. Um, so first thing you just do if you're ready to you know, host a webinar, you just go up here to create session. Really simple. And once you create a session, it, already, it brings up this panel on the side. It just has you want, wants you to um, have it, you name it. So we'll go test webinar. And you notice uh, not long after I'm done already typing, it already has me a, has a link. So right here, this would be my link to be able to join as a presenter. And it gives me a link for the participant. So I could go ahead and copy, copy and paste this into an email and send it off to any participants who I want to join. Uh, further down here then is event details. It already defaults, of course, to, to the current time and date. So that's good, the start date. Well, my end date, you know, you could pick a date for this session to end. But for many of us, we just like to keep it open because we're going to use it many times. So the nice thing is you just click no end. So it's an open session. The uh, end gets grayed out. Um, so now these links that I would be getting here for myself and for the participants would be good forever uh, as long as this room stays open and I don't delete it from my dashboard. Don't worry about invitations too much. That's where you can send you know people's email addresses in. Well, we're to, you can just copy and paste it and send it to an, in, into an email um, that way. And then session recordings, very important because if this, if these are going to be meetings or webinars that you're going to be having that you're going to record, and then you want to maybe download those recordings and put them to a shared drive or put them to YouTube, you want to click Allow Recording Downloads. By default, it's not checked. So first thing when I do after I get, uh, when I'm creating this session, a new session, Allow Recording Downloads. Um, when you get a recording, and I'll show that at the very end, you can you get a link so you can watch it within a browser. Um, but you can also go find it and, and download it, which it gives you as an MP4 video file that, like I said, you can put to a shared drive or put it to YouTube um, and pass along to people that way. And then the, the rest of them here are, are kind of things like if you're a, kind of in like a teacher-student role where you can take off certain things that the students can uh, or participants can be allowed to do. So if you just want to, if it's just going to be a meeting and you're, or a, I said like a presentation and you're just going to talk, you can go ahead and take off the ability for participants to share their audio, share their video, or even post chat messages. We'll leave that one on for now. Um, and this is a good one, and it's by default it's checked, uh, so that's good. Don't have to worry about it. But allow attendees to join using a telephone. And I'll show you a little bit later. Um, similar to the classic version, you can there's a spot where you click, and if say your headset's not working or your your audio isn't working, either speakers or your microphone, um, you can click a button. It gives you a phone number and a pin number. You can just call in and that your phone works as your headset. Your phone then you can talk and listen to the session that way. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and click Save. And as you see then it comes right down here uh, on my list here in my dashboard, Test Webinar. And that's my meeting. That's where I'm ready to, to join. And I could right now join it by just clicking there and then um, it brings up this little window that says Launch Session and I would go right into the session. Um, but quickly I want to show you some other options here on the side um, related to this session. So, again, I can get into it right there with Launch Session. Uh, here where I can edit the settings. So everything I just went through and did um, with the dates and allowing certain things to occur with the participants, I can change that right now. So say now I had a meeting and I didn't want people to talk or be able to share the video, but the next meeting we're all going to collaborate and talk and share video. Then I can just come back in here and change those and save it, and I'm just updating that session. Uh, and then uh, next to that, we got view reports, and that would be uh, there's no, no report will be in that one yet. So I'll just just to show you, I'll go.
go into the fall conference speaker here. This was when um, Dr. Borboom was speaking at um, a, the general session at fall conference. And if I could click view reports, it lets me know every time that this session is being used, the dates and the duration. Now I know this one right here is the, is the time because I see there's a lot of attendees and it was a two and a half hour, almost two and a half hour session. Well, if I come over here and click view report, I get a list of everybody who logged in. There's two pages worth here. Everybody logged in, what time they first joined, what time they left, and how long they were actually in the session for. Um, we've used that a lot in the past when we've had uh, candidate, candidate interviews and other things to find out who kind of logged in and who, who was listening to the session. All right, uh, and then that was pretty much the last kind of important thing. Delete session, obviously, if it's some, you know, like a one time or maybe you created a new one, you can go ahead and delete it. And that would obviously remove it from the dashboard and all those links I just sent out wouldn't be good. So we're not gonna do that. And then another chance to copy the guest link if you need to, um, you find it right there. So if there's any- Scott, yep, Scott this is Becky. Sure, Becky. Um, since you can't see the chat, a couple of us are writing about the phone option because of course that's one of the big advantages of Blackboard Collaborate Ultra over Skype. And Rochelle is curious and I don't know the answer to this. So good question, Rochelle. <laughs> Do we get the phone number they call ahead of time? Because you copied the URL, but where do we get that phone number? Yeah. So do we have that so we can email that out at the same time? Yeah, so um, let me see here again. I can't remember. We didn't see it in the edit settings, I don't believe, right? Um, you, ha you get the, I, b I believe you get the email or you get the phone number when you're in the session. But it's the same phone number and PIN number for the session. For each for each session, it stays the same. So what you could do is you could log into the session, get that number, you know, and then put it in the email for everybody. Could you demonstrate that for us? Because I think a lot of us will use Collaborate Ultra specifically for that purpose. Yeah, I'm going to double check. Option. I'm going to double check that uh, afterwards. But I, I'm pretty sure, because that's the way it was with the old version, so I don't know why they would have changed it. But, yes, I'll definitely... Um, demonstrate that when we get into the session. So thank you. But I tried to open the chat up, but I've got like three monitors here, so if I don't see them on the side. Please feel free to keep uh, just jumping in if, if there's another chat in there with a question. So, um, so just since this test webinar one that I just uh, just created, I'm gonna actually we're gonna jump into a session, but I'm gonna jump in this one test three because you'll see here in a second I've actually logged in with my other computer, so there's some other people in the room, other participants, I guess you could say. And so this is what it looks like when you first log in. And I see Scott 2 and Tess because there's three people in the room. And uh, me, as I'm logged in as AgCom, and then Scott 2 and Tess. So that's why we just see these little profiles now because there's just us three in the room. Uh, as more people log in, similar to Skype and other things, you know, you see other uh, profiles and headshots and, and video or whatnot. Um, so say we're ready to, you know, just log in. Maybe I logged in early. We're going to kind of get things set up here with the, with the meeting. But I'll go over a, a few of the features here first. So on the bottom, um, first little button here, hopefully you can see that. Yeah, there's my mouse hovering over it. The little uh, icon here is the settings. And when you click that, it pops up the panel on the side again and goes right to your settings. Now here is where we get, we can set up our camera and our microphone. So in case it's first time logging in or it's been a while, you can go ahead and click that and it'll go through give you a little audio test it says great I sound great great it's working does a video test which I'm not sure if it'll read the same one that I'm using through Skype so I'll just go ahead and say yes it's working um, second one down there is use your phone for audio so that's one we wanted to check on and so there it's got a phone number and a pin number and you can just go ahead and copy and paste that drop it in an email and like I said it'll be um, same same number and pin number for every, for every time so And you can use that then, you know, like I said, uh, people can, obviously your phone that works as your headset, but also would work for somebody if they're on the road. Uh, they can call in and listen uh, that way. If, you know, you don't want to miss the meeting, even though you're not maybe seeing what they're going to share, if they're sharing a PowerPoint or their desktop, um, you can still at least listen in. Um, so some microphone speaker settings and then notification settings. Um, this, as you kind of get into more and more se sessions, you notice that, when people join the room, raise their hand, um, leave the room, there's all these little notifications that pop up. You personally, so this wouldn't be for the everybody in the room 
I wouldn't be doing this for everybody else, all the participants. This is just for me personally. So for each um, person logging in separately can do this too. You can take those off so you don't see all these notifications that pop up when somebody uh, you know sends a chat message and stuff. Obviously, that is good when you know you're as a presenter. You might want to have that alert to let you know that somebody's sending a chat message. I'll show how that looks here in a second. Uh, and then the session settings. So you know how we had <clears throat> just saved the session and we were going to allow everybody to share their audio and video. I can change that right here as well. And you, you don't see it here, but, <laughs> but my participant window here on my other computer just popped up a little window that said, you can now share video, you can now share, now share audio. So it lets the, um, the participants know that if it had been turned off before. Okay, so that was our settings. The next button is for microphone. I'm not going to go ahead and turn that on because we're running, you know, through multiple systems here. That's where I turn my microphone on. Here's where I turn my camera on. I can turn that on because that's pretty easy. If it's going to, I don't know if it's going to read it or not though. Um, and then for raising your hand, if you have a question, gives you a little uh, notification on who's first and whatnot. I'll raise this guy's hand over here. So as you see, he's now second, and that guy raised their hand third, and there we go. He's a little slow. And it even tells you then as a presenter, see, it tells me up in the corner that this person has raised their hand. I can lower it right there. Um, I can lower both of them myself um, if once I've answered the question. Or they can click the, uh, the raise hand button themselves again and it will go away. So right there, test raise his hand and then test lowered his hand as well. So they can do it if they get their, answer, their question answered or you as a presenter can do it as well. Okay, over on the side here, uh, you saw this panel pop out before. Right here is this little purple icon is where you actually can pop it out. You might not be able to see it if my cam or your Skype camera is in the way here as I look over mine is. But on the bottom right, there's a little purple um, icon that opens up the side panel. And that's where the settings were that we saw before, but this is important to have out because of a couple other options, the chat and the participants and the where you can share content. Um, so the chat, obviously similar to everything else we've used uh, in the past, just a way for everybody to chat together. You can chat everyone together. Here, I'll actually have this guy chat so you can see it here quick. So you can chat, and as you see on the top there, it says everyone. This is something you got to keep an eye out for. As some people at Fall Conference mentioned, that's a little um, tricky because it says everyone so we know this message is going to go to everyone but you can talk to people individually so just as another moderator I can type just to a moderator and so that tells me up on top it's just going to anybody else who's a moderator in this session go back to everyone and of course they don't see what I had just typed and then you can also chat, chat, uh, chat with people individually so we go to the attendees list so we're back down here at the bottom uh, part of this panel and like I said, there's two people here. I'll go to Scott 2, click on the little three dots here, settings next to him, and I can send a chat message this way. Go, Hi, Scott 2. Don't you love just talking to yourself? Um, and so now I see I have to, again, make sure I'm seeing at the top that it says Scott 2. I don't want to, you know, be sending messages to him and have it saying everyone, everyone at top because then I'd be in trouble and everybody would be seeing what I was trying to send just to them. Um, let's see if this is the one here. Yeah. So I'll click back on the participant uh, window there real quick. So as you saw, there's three people in this room. There's me at the top. It's got two we've already chatted with. Um, you can see that the what I had to click on was called the attendees con control. And so the other kind of big thing here would be other than sending a chat message, is to making them a moderator or a presenter. Uh, making a moderator actually, um, there's there's differences between the moderator and presenter. The moderator means they can do anything you can do in regards to, to kicking people out, like right to, as you see here, removing from the session. They can make other people moderators, or they can control that audio and video, whether or not other people can share their audio and video. If you make them a presenter, all they can do then is share content. Um, if you've already allowed everybody to share audio and video, uh, the only extra thing that they'd be able to do as a presenter is share content. If you had audio and video shut off for the room, 
you could make somebody a presenter and then they'd be allowed to um, share their audio and video along so with Scott, the content. Scott, this is Becky. How, how would I present? The other systems I've been on, it's real obvious how to present. But if, if you're the moderator, but you ask me to share my PowerPoint and do the talking for a while, how do I do that from my end? Mm -hmm. Well, I'll show that. That'll, that'll be next year. Um, oh, sorry. Okay. Jump the no, gun. No, that's okay. And, and, and you know, normally um, when I log into a session ahead of time and get started, I already have the PowerPoint loaded, um, have everything ready to go, of course. So when somebody logs in, they know, hey, I'm in the right session. Um, of course, this one, I just don't have a PowerPoint because I'm, I'm demoing it. Um, but, yeah, next to the attendees here um, is share content. So if I click on the share content button, you see uh, some options, share blank whiteboard, it's nothing. It just brings up a white screen where of course everybody can have fun with putting putting stuff on the screen. Um, you know, you can collaborate. We we're joking with Frayne that he likes to use, uh, he can use some, do some cool graphs and charts, you know, with all this on here. I'm trying to show a box, but for some reason it's not coming up. Are they coming up? Oh, it's because it's coming up white. That would be why. There we go. Um, share application. Ask if you want to share your entire screen or just an application. So the entire screen, of course, would be your entire desktop. And then application would be just a certain window, like just a Word document or just a, a, a you know, Excel spreadsheet or a certain thing. A lot of times we'll just show the entire desktop. It's a lot easier. Um, and then share files. This is where you'd be able to load a PowerPoint. So uh, I'm on the AgCom 405A computer right now. So I might have to actually, I'm going to cancel this. I'm going to make one of these guys a presenter. And so you actually see now it changes to test one to presenter here. And I'm going to come over here and load a PowerPoint for him real quick. So we have a PowerPoint in the room. You can see. So are you loading the PowerPoint or is it still on the guest presenter's computer? Well, I, I would I would be loading the PowerPoint right here if I could try, but I don't know if there's any PowerPoints on this AdCom computer. Yeah, yeah, but my question is still say you know, I'm the moderator but I ask somebody else to present for my session. I don't want them saying next slide, next slide, next slide every time because yeah. I've got the PowerPoint. I want them to have the PowerPoint and be in control. Is yeah, that possible? Yes, yeah. Once you make them a moderator or presenter, they can have access to the PowerPoint you would have already preloaded or they could load one themselves. That's what I wanted to hear. Then, I don't want it on my computer. Okay. Yeah. And then they yeah, and then they can just advance the slides themselves, yeah, but not have to do that. So, okay, yeah. thank you. Yep, let me try to share a PowerPoint real quick. Just so you can see how it shows up. I'm trying to find one that... Right. We'll just go with this one. Um, So I got a PowerPoint loading on my laptop here that hopefully will show up here in a second. And um, like Becky was asking about, it, it would anybody who is a modder then should have access to be able to ch to advance these slides. So there it is. Like I said, it was loaded on another part on a different computer. But this would be the way you do it. You just click Add Files and you go ahead and search for the PowerPoint. You know, like you search any other document or attachment and then click Open, and then it gives you a little. Uh, progress wheel to let you know when it's when it's um, almost ready and then so to, to actually get this to the room so everybody can see it I would just click the file there click share now and it brings up all the slides on the side and then I just have to click on the slide to bring it up so it doesn't automatically show you slide one right away you have to click on slide one to bring it up um, but now I don't even have to worry about the slides here on the right I can just come down here and advance right here with this arrow Next slide, and it advances. You see on the side, it goes from two to three. But if I did want to jump ahead, you know, say to slide 10, I can just come over to the right side here and, and double click on the slide and advance that way. You want to go to slide 16, and then we want to say, okay, now I've you know, I missed a few things. Let's go, back to, let's go back to seven. 
And then if I want, then we can just go back to the arrows and advance one by one here. So and you can and you can upload multiple uh, ones to it, and they would just be all listed right here. So you just would click, like I said, whichever one you need. You just would click it and click share now, and it would it would show up on the side. So that's a nice thing is you can have a couple different ones loaded. Um, you can have you know ones ready for both both people presenting if there's more than one. But it also doesn't take that long to load unless you have a you know PowerPoint that has you know a hundred slides and every slide has a really big picture on it. Then it might take a few more minutes to load. Um, which is then good to obviously load it ahead of time, but it does not take very long at all. And the nice thing that's different about this one versus the classic version, for those that try to use that one a lot, is this: these PowerPoints then stay in this session. Before, if you log out of the room, when you log back in the next time, you'd have to reload it. Uh, but no, this one stays in the session. And so if you you know do it multiple times, same one, you have it already in there. But the nice thing is, too, if you do have a new one, all you have to do is obviously just be on it here and click the trash button, and it's gone. And you can upload a new one if you have updated it or have a different one in there altogether. So I should have left it in there, but <laughs> I just deleted it from the room. So, um, Any questions about that? I know I would zip through that kind of fast. I didn't want to spend too much time on anything because I wanted to kind of keep this to a half hour, 45 minutes. Um, so I'll just quickly go over a couple of other things real quick. And like I said, just go ahead and jump in if you got any questions. I know I scrolled through that pretty fast. Uh, there's a polling feature here. Um, haven't used that too much, even with the old version. Um, but you could have on your PowerPoint slides, you know, multiple choice questions or even yes or no questions. And then say you, you, um, you just click yes. And this will pop up for all the participants. So you can, it doesn't have to be a PowerPoint slide with the, with the question either. You know, you can verbally Obviously, a yes or no question would be easy just to say, um, you know, do you all think that uh, the buyers are going to win the national title again this year? You go ahead and click on yes, and it gives you an updated quick poll of what everybody is saying um, right here in, in front of you. And all the participants are seeing that same thing. So, Scott, this is Rochelle. Can you hear me? Yes, I can, Rochelle. Go ahead. Um, so you can prepare, like, different polls with different questions in advance. It would almost have to be built into your PowerPoint slide, like in Adobe Connect, you can build um, uh, like different polls and then pull them in to have participants um, interact in. Yeah, I we were discussing that too um, at one of the sessions too, and I think uh, Lisa Peterson was saying that there's, there, I, there was a name of a software that she said that can go within um, can work within web conferencing so you can do that kind of thing and I she was going to double check on it when she got back and we haven't connected since so I'm not sure but I'm as far as I can tell it's another thing I was going to look into as far as I know you can't like I said it's more you have to kind of put it into a PowerPoint slide and then get the polling answers you know right here from from collaborate just the answers yeah you can't have those like built-in questions ahead of time you'd have to like I said yeah I'd have to have it on a uh, PowerPoint and then you're just you can get the answers. You can you can find those later. Um, I think you can kind of get the uh, the full numbers of the results within um, when you go back to like the dashboard area. Um, but I don't think you can preload any of that stuff, unfortunately. Okay. So, but you could capture the data afterwards. So, if you're asking a specific question, yes or no, then you could go back and get those as far as how many responded. Yes, I believe so. I, I'll double check that one too. Um, I think that's back on the dashboard. You, can you do multiple chat pods and like pull those in, or is that not an option either? Um, to split people up, you mean for the chats, or to to have a to download the chat? Have them pre-prepared, like questions that you want people to respond to. Is that an option to have those preloaded, like Adobe, or not? Not that I'm aware. You okay. Preloaded stuff that preloaded questions that would go in the chat. Yep. Okay, yeah, not that I'm aware. Not, No, I'm not sure. Okay, thanks. Yeah, still learning some of this myself. <laughs> um, and then, so last one over here with uh, in the uh, share content would be breakout groups. Again, don't use this a ton, but if you have a huge group and, you know, you want to have some brainstorming sessions, you can just drag and drop people into different groups, and then it even it will tell them right away, as you move them to their different group, it'll tell them in their participant window 
you've been moved to group five or whatever. And everybody within group five then is chatting and talking and sharing stuff just within themselves, just within their group. And then at any point, the moderators can then come back and well, I'd have to click start. I'd be moving people around. See, it says starting breakout groups. And then me as the moderator, I can just come back. Uh, where is that here? Got to go to share content, breakout groups, and then just click stop. And it takes a minute or two of bringing everybody back to the main room. Um, it takes, a, I don't know, 10, 15 seconds. And then we're all back in the main room talking and sharing again. So. Um, I think that was kind of all, uh, kind of it to the uh, the main screen, kind of the main uh, features you can get here. Um, so maybe double check my notes here. I know I kind of went through that pretty fast. As many of you know, it's just different uh, things. You just kind of need to get in there and play around with it yourselves, use it a little bit more, and you'll you know kind of notice how easy it is and um, learn some of the different features that way. Um, one thing I do remember now here, when you're in the session, up here in the upper left is the session menu. That's where you'll start a recording. Obviously, that's important. So click Start Recording. Let's you know session's being recorded. It also has a little camera icon right there. Let's you know recording is in progress. And then if we're, we're, we're done, we just go ahead and click Stop Recording. And that's where the phone number is, I see. And that's so... where the other phone number is. So we wouldn't even need it. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. We wouldn't have needed to come over here to the settings to get it, the minute we logged in, we could have just clicked up here and gotten it right there. Yep. Let me double check here. All I have to do is click on my settings here to find out. Yeah, so the phone, the phone number is the same for everybody. The PIN number will be different um, because each person could have their own PIN and their own phone used as their, you know, like their headset. But again, I'll have to check it because I haven't test it, but again, I'd be assume it'd be the same as the old version. I was able to give people my PIN number, and they were able to call in and be listening in, but yet I was still logged in, you know, doing everything I needed to do through the web. Um, I'll still double check that one, though. Used by two people. So, that didn't make sense, what you just said to me. So, the phone number has a pin for the call in, right? They shouldn't need quote your pin number. Nope, every I don't know if the room has its own like generic pin. But each session, each person who logs in, I'm saying that session, each person who logs in has their own pin number. Uh, where do you why would each person have a pin number? I don't understand. Because if so me right here, this person if I'm having um, technical issues with my audio, I can I have this PIN number for myself to call in. Um, tester Scott Two over here has their own PIN number to call in too, so it's separate. So, um, like again, I have to check double check on this, but it's the way the old version was. Is then that next to my name, I'd have a little phone icon next to my name, so the presenter would know that so and so logged in with their, or, or I mean has called in with their phone. Um, or are listening is listening with their phone, but we were still able to use those phone numbers and pin numbers for anybody else who might have been on the road or just not able to log in via computer. But everybody who calls into a certain session should have the same phone number and the same pin number, right? No, well, it depends on it. You can give them. You can give it when you send out the email. You can give um, one phone number, one pin number that everybody could use. But I'm, yes. what I'm saying is everybody who's logged in through their computer has a different PIN number. Just because each se each person logged into a session gets a different PIN number just for that individual user. But you can, like I said, you can send out an email, or in the email you send out for the meeting, you can give a, uh, one of them, and that goes for every that goes anybody that can use it for. You know, might not be able to log in through the web. I know it's confusing, but basically, yes, the one you send on the email should work for everybody. But individually, if you do still log in through the web, but while you're in the session you have issues, you wouldn't have to go back to find the email to get that PIN number. You could just go ahead and click right here what we're looking at, and you'd have be able to call in there. But that PIN number is different from that what they'd be giving in the email. 
Okay, okay, I'm trying to keep this as simple as possible. If I need 15 people on this web conference, I send those 15 an email and it says either click on this link and it takes them right in and they don't have to download an app or anything. Or if you're not at your computer, call this phone number and use this pin. And that should be all I need, correct? Yes. Okay. So if you're on the web, you don't need an additional phone number or excuse me, pin number, you just click on the link. Yes, if you're going to be logging in, you mean to the, to the session with your computer? Yes. Yep, then you just click on the link. And then, like I said, you still could use the phone number that's provided in the email. Yes. Um, but if not, there'll be an, you can find it right here within the session too. But if they're on the road, they won't have that. So yep. the two options when I send the email are to send the URL and the phone number with the pin. Yep. Awesome. OK, thank you for the clarification. You bet. I'm actually calling in right now. So I want... See, you even told me right there, now you are now using your phone audio. Others can hear you. To stop using your phone audio, hang up with your phone. You'll switch back to using your microphone for audio. That's kind of what I want to call in, just so you can see that. I was curious if it showed the um, an icon over here to let me know that I'm calling in by a phone. Yep, it's got the phone icon to let others know that I've called in via the phone. So that is similar to the, uh, or exactly the way the old version was too. So. so again, that's probably the biggest advantage for all of us to using Collaborate Ultra over Skype is that phone option. Yep. And the non-NDSU option, since I don't know about the rest of you, but I've had trouble getting Skype to work with non-NDSU people. Yeah. And while we're talking about the differences, um, the next thing I was going to talk about or show was kind of was recordings, and I like the uh, what Ultra does for recordings is that it, they keep it cloud-based. I mean, they store all your their, all the recordings on their end, and you can access them, send out links, they can watch them within a browser, or you can then download them like we talked about earlier. Whereas Skype, as far as I know, right, each person can record it to their computer. Then of course you got to go and find it and um, see where it was um, downloaded to and whatnot. And I believe with Zoom, for those that have maybe used Zoom or tried Zoom or heard about Zoom, that some people are using that now too, Zoom, um, I think, does both. Uh, does have the cloud and the storing on your computer option or recording to your computer. Um, but for those that might have, a, you know, have heard about Zoom or, and were wondering about Zoom, um, the biggest advantage for Ultra over Zoom is that it's free. Um, Ultra is free to us for university system people to use. And um, if you need help, you got me. And then if I need help, I got people that I can contact since I don't obviously do that, use this or do this, you know, um, all day, every day. There's people that do. And um, within the university system, I can actually just on the other side of Fargo, the other side of town, they, uh, they have their offices and I can contact them to, to help me out if I have any questions as well. Um, so I mentioned the recordings. Let's go back then. I obviously I stopped the recording. Um, now to go check out the recordings, I'm going to have to leave this session. So I'll come back up here, and way down on the bottom there is leave session in the lower left. And it always brings up this window. I can't. Find, I wish there was a button to say, please don't show again. But nope, I just always click skip. I mean, I guess you could be good and rate them if it was a good or a bad one. I just usually do skip because I know where it is. And, I uh, don't like that popping up. So tells me that I've left the session. I can close my browser. <clears throat> but I actually want to. Uh, oh, hold on, wrong button. Here we go. I want to go back to the recordings page, and so maybe I shouldn't have actually logged out of the session. Sorry about that. Uh, Okay, maybe I did want to. Why don't let go? Let me go back to the login page here. Do, 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 do. Okay, here we go. So back to the dashboard then. Um, uh, as you see, saw before the recordings here on the lower left is then where you can go and find all the recordings that you have for 
all your sessions or just one session if that's what you have. Um, the new one has not showed up yet because I haven't logged. I got to kick these other people out here, and then it'll it'll show up. Similar to the old version, um, everybody has to be out of the room, out of the session before the recording gets start start process is starting to be processed. So sometimes I'll stay in a session until everybody's out or until it gets down to one or two people, and then I'll kick them out if I know they're just have, had walked away from their computer and they were unaware of uh, that they were still in the room because the recording won't show up here for me to get the link to until everybody's out of the room and it's allowed to, to process on their end. Um, but while we're waiting here, I was going to show, I'll just go to like this test three recording. So through in the recording options, I could watch now and it'll just play right here within the browser. I can download it and it'll come and uh, go to my downloads folder and like I said before, it turns into an MP4 that you can just share with anybody. And you can also delete it. Or, well, there you go, it shows up there in the bottom now. It's downloading. Um, delete it, or then copy the link. And you could copy and paste that to an email and send it out. And the link then would allow others to watch it again through the web. Um, just like we could watch it here by clicking the watch now button. Um, that's another nice thing is if you have it, I don't think you have to set it up that way. I think it's just kind of automatic that when you're creating a new session, Collaborate will send you an email with the login information as well. And then after you have a um, recording, it should send you uh, an email with the recording link too. So you don't actually have to come back to this recordings page and find it if you just want to send a link out for those to watch it who weren't able to to join. Um, you'd have to log in to get this to this recordings page to uh, to download it, um, like we saw here, uh, or delete it to get it off of your uh, recordings dashboard. So it's sort of taking a while to get uh, get connected, but or to, for the recording to be ready, but it wasn't much of a recording to watch, anyways. So uh, any questions here? I see Rochelle's was the last one, so. About chat pods, and I got that one answered, which unfortunately they didn't. Um, but like I said before at the beginning, if this is something you want to use, go ahead and let me know. Um, even if you want to just kind of think you think you might want to use it, but you want to test it a little bit more and, and play around with it, um, let me know. Uh, maybe you have a collaborate account from before and you and you're unaware. I can look up in our in my um, spreadsheet and find out and, and send you the information again, the login information. Or just create you a new uh, new account. It's very very simple, and get you all the information you need to to log in and start yourself. Um, I'm gonna check on a couple other things with the phone number and the pin number. And if it's not what I said, <laughs> I'll send out some information uh, to explain the best way they do say to use it. So.